All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take the textures that we made in Substance Painter and put them into Maya and get it rendered inside of Arnold. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my high poly real quick so we'll get our low. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is actually set up some lighting. So we're going to use some IBL, which is image based lighting inside of Arnold. And we're going to use some of the HDR images, which are those high dynamic range images that Substance Painter uses to light your objects while you're painting in the program. We're going to take some of those images or use one of them, bring that into Maya so we actually get somewhat of the same lighting scenarios that you would use while you're texturing your object in Painter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Arnold Renderer to do this. We're going to go up to the Arnold tab at the top, click on that, and we're going to go down the lights. And the one we want to use is a sky dome light. Click it. And it doesn't look like it does anything, but you can see something showed up on the out, in the outliner here. So it's the sky dome light. Click on it and then zoom back out and you can see it's this big giant sphere. And what's going to happen is we're going to take this HDR image and map it to this huge sphere and then every pixel in that image is going to become a light source to light our scene. Just the way it does inside of Painter. So we're going to bring up the attribute editor and in here here's all the attributes for that node and we'll talk about a few of these I'm not going to dive into it too much in this tutorial uh, just the ones that you need to get things going so we're going to go to color and this is where you map your HDR image to Arnold or the this IBL node so we're going to go click on the input brings up the uh, render node go to file we're going to go filter type set that to off and then go to image name and down in here we're going to find go to my computer C drive and go find the directory where substance painter 2 resides in so album remix so the C drive C drive program files album remix painter 2 resources I think it's shelf album rhythmic and then environments and in here there's three more folders these are exterior HDRs interior and studio studio lighting so depending on which one you you want to use you can experiment and see which one works the best for you so exterior lighting is where I'm gonna go and I'm I just want to use the shipyard it just seems like that's the most place where you would find um, a gas can so I'm just gonna roll with that and that looks pretty good I like how that looks um, the other thing too is you know if nobody else has painter 2 loaded on their computer and you're linking to this across this you know across your computers onto the C drive and if this file doesn't exist this will not load properly or not even get loaded into Maya because it's looking for this file path up here at the top so the better workflow here is to take this image drop it in the Maya project directory like in source images and then go in there and reference this file into Maya from the appropriate Maya project directory so just to let you know if you want me to be opening up your files and you want the proper lighting that you set up you got to make sure that this is in your Maya project directory all right so I'm just telling showing you where to get some and again you don't have to use these you can use any HDR images that you find online or make your own so we'll just open that up and you can see that loads in and kind of zoom back out you can kind of see it comes kind of comes in a little dark uh, if we select it so I'll just mark key select it and then we can get back to the node in here we've got intensity T intensity you don't want to really mess with it's more you come down to the bottom is exposure and that's where you actually start playing with how much light contribution puts into the scene but you're not going to really see that inside the viewport it's more in the renderer um, so right now I would set this to a level like 0.2 and we'll, we'll bring that up in a little bit and the other thing that's really important before I you know skip over it resolution resolution I usually is default to a thousand I usually set this to like two or three thousand uh, that just cranks up the resolution of the image 
So every pixel in this image is a light source, but you're kind of dumbing down the resolution for lighting for speed purposes. If you want more accuracy in your lighting, you would increase the resolution more here. Uh, so it, it's better for final renders, but for quick uh, rendering, you can drop this down. So it's like kind of de-resing the image. So it doesn't have to set each pixel doesn't have to project each light. It kind of just averages them out a little bit more. So the lighting is not as accurate. But once you get down to it, crank this number up for more accurate lighting. Uh, exposure, again, uh, we'll skip all this stuff. Um, exposure, again, that's how much bright it is. And then samples, we'll see what samples does here in a minute. So where we're gonna go is come up back to Arnold, Arnold Render View, and there it is, starting to light it. So let's just come up on it a little bit more. And it looks like we're, my viewport's really off to the corner here, as you can see. Uh, let's go into window in the Arnold renderer and just say frame all, or short shortcut key would be A. There you go. Now oh, that's looking a lot better. So I'm just kind of zooming up on it. And you can see it's interactively rendering. And that's the nice thing about Arnold, does this pretty quickly. Now I also am rendering at 512, 512 to just, you know, for speed purposes, uh, to dial in my textures and dial in my lighting. Once you've figured out what your lighting is and your textures are, then you start uh, upping your resolution to get more accuracy and better quality and more uh, resolution there. Uh, so what you want to do for that is you want to go into the render settings right here under the common tab, come down to image size and here width and height is where you want to set that. So again, I did 512 by 512 right there for speed purposes. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's click on that sky dome light again. And I'm just going to go down to my exposure node and just crank it up just a little bit more. And you can see that's just brightening up the scene a little bit more. And again, you're starting to see this digital noise right here. There's a lot here because it's re-rendering a lot area. But there's a lot of noise in the shadow, just pretty much everywhere. So that's where underneath exposure, that's where samples comes in. So for speed purposes, you know, keeping, you know, the render times fast, you can keep it down to one and it gives you a general idea. But if you want better quality, you just start cranking this up into like two or three. I think just jumping from one to two really jumps the quality. And you can see it's starting to get rid of a lot of that noise. So if you want to reduce that noise even further, you drop that to like three or four or five. And it's just going to get cleaner and cleaner and better. So for right now, I'm going to keep it at two for speed purposes. Uh, this is enough accuracy for me to get the job done. So pretty much that's, you know, dialing in uh, the lighting for our scene. Again, I might come back in here and change some parameters as we're putting textures in it because you might find that the lighting is too bright or too dark based off the textures that you're putting in. All right, so I'm going to close this out because we don't need that running anymore because we've got our basic lighting setup done. Uh, let's put the shader on. 